I'm going to make a short video on how to create these bubbles that you see here. This is a SolidWorks drawing, but how to create those in AutoCAD. And I was asked that question by someone in class today. I gave you an, a, a procedure for doing it that works fine, but I was thinking after that that I have a better idea that can automate things a little further. So I'm going to use, this is my example, and I've got two viewports set up in AutoCAD, one at 1 to 2, one at 1 to 1. What I want to be able to do is to put a bubble on here. Oops, let's make sure we lock that viewport so I can use the viewport scale annotatively. We'll do the same thing with that one. All right. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go into the block editor. I'm going to create the bubble. I'm going to put an attribute in it. I'm going to make it annotative. I always want it to plot at the same size no matter what scale. So I go to block editor. And I want to call this thing bubble. I'm going to draw a polygon. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to draw a polygon with a lot of sides. Let's go with 200. And I'll put this at 0, comma 0. And I'll say I want it to be inscribed in a circle that has a radius of 3 because I want it to plot at a, at a diameter of 6. Now this thing looks like a circle because there's so many sides. So why didn't I just draw a circle? Because I want to put a wipeout on it because I want the, the uh, bubbles to come in oriented properly, which means that the leader coming up to the bubble should stop at the bubble but point toward the center. That's hard to do if I put an insertion point on here other than center. So I want this to be centered on the end of a leader, but I don't want the part of the leader that goes past the edge of this to show. Now, when I do that, I go to wipe out and say, I'm going to pick a polyline. It has to be a closed polyline and it can't be circular because you can't have a closed circular polygon, polyline. Do I want to erase the uh, polyline? Um, I, can, I can say yes, just so it doesn't show up, or I can say no, it doesn't matter because it looks so much like a circle. I'll just say no. But it does have that kind of faded outlook, which is why I'm now on top of that wipeout going to draw a circle at the same location that has a diameter that's the same. Now the wipeout is first in draw order. On top of that is a circle. Now I'm going to add an attribute definition. The attribute definition will just be number. And I'll have my request be number question mark. I'm not going to put a default in because it's going to change. I want that to be, this is a metric drawing by the way, so six millimeters for the bubble is about a quarter of an inch, three millimeters for the text is about an eighth of an inch, using something based on Roman S. And instead of being left justified, we're going to go middle, not center. Middle is what's going to put it where we want it to go. I place it at the center of this, like that, looks like so. Now the last thing I want to do is to go to properties and make sure that this block itself is an annotative block. So I'm going to say yes. So now this block consists of three elements. If I go over to properties, you'll see that four elements. A circle, a polyline, four elements. An attribute definition and a wipeout because I did not erase the original polyline. I could have, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe I should have. Anyway, I'm going to close the block editor, save the changes. Now there are two ways that I can use this. I can use a leader and then just put the leader on something and coming off of whatever I put the leader on, it's going to have an arrowhead. It's going to look like that. <clears throat> when I press the escape key, I can now go out. And by the way, it's only showing up in one of these because I have a dimension style set up that is annotative. Yeah, and that dimension style means that this has got an annotative scale assigned to it, and it's only going to show up at the scale it was placed unless I also place the other one. Same is going to be true of my block. Now I can bring that block in here like this and just snap to the end of this. comes up and I say I want one, pick OK. Now that is a radial line coming right out because the wipeout blocks it. If I want to see it in both places, I think both of those things, can I do it at once? I thought I could add an annotative scale to both at once. I cannot because they're two different types of entities. So I have to do one at a time. So I can either do it here or I can go over here and just say let's show all. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's show all of the annotative objects. And now I can say, well, let's take those things. And no, I can't do it here either. All right, I have to do one at a time no matter what. So I can say annotative scale, add current scale. Do the same thing with this. Add current scale. 
Now, I've got things that look exactly the same when they're plotted in two different scales. There's one other thing I can do if I want to make this slightly more automated, and that's if only you had, a, I'd only do this if I had a lot of these to do. I can go into the leader command, and under settings in the leader command, I can tell it to bring in a block reference. I can do that now when I use the leader command. I pick something over here. I'll, I'll change over here. So let's, let's say I pick this. Now I can go at any angle that I want here. Put it in at whatever angle that I want. Put it down here. And then press enter. It asks me what the block name is. Block name is going to be called bubble. Where do I want to put it? Right on the end. So I just pick that point right there. It comes up. I have to answer a couple questions about scale factor and rotation angle. And then I put in the number come back over here and pick OK, and now I've got the, the bubble for two. Now that works with an arrowhead, but what if I want to put something on a surface? A surface requires a dot. For that, I can do the same thing, but I can go to settings now, and under that leader for settings, I can change the arrowhead from what I have it set for right now to a dot, which is probably going to be pretty big, but I could change my dimension style, or a small dot, which is probably going to be a little too small. If I have both things set up at once, now I could go and do all everything that's going to be on a surface first. Do that. Say put the bubble in there. Snap to that point right there. Say a few things, you know, just press enter a few times, pick OK. So what I've got now is a, um, a bubble block that I can use at any scale. See over here, they don't look very good because I'm showing everything at all scales. If I change that and say only show it at the scale it's assigned. Now I can see one over here. I can see one over here, but I can't see these two. I could, however, add probably I can do both of the blocks at once. Nope. I want to add annotative scales to two things at once, and I'm pretty sure I could. Maybe I can do it here. Yeah, I'd have to go to properties to do it. So I could say go ahead and add one to two, and I could have used Q select to select all the blocks in here. Pick OK. Now they're going to show up in both places. But again, I'd have to do the same thing to the leaders. And now I'm pretty sure I could do that in properties, even though I can't do it by right clicking. And the answer is yes, I can. So I'd go back over here again, add whatever scale I wanted. Now chances are pretty good. You're going to only want them at one scale, but you do want to put them in there in model space. So you want to make sure they show up no matter what you had to scale the assembly at. Uh, and again, this is something I did for my class at SMCC, Southern Maine Community College. I thought I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel in case somebody else might find it useful. And I'll notify my other classes as well.